Data can also be classified into four levels of measurement. Now don't get hung up on measurement, meaning that it's continuous. It's just another way of classifying data. The first way to classify data is to refer to it as nominal. This is where order doesn't mean anything. Well, putting it in any particular order, that is. So for example, imagine this semester you're taking Spanish 1, which is class number, you know, 75012, and you're also taking History 5, which in the catalog is number, you know, 75013. So in terms of your classes, you could order them alphabetically, but does that mean anything? Does, you know, history have to come before Spanish? Maybe your Spanish class is Monday morning and happens before. You could have ordered your classes by section number, but again, in this particular case, history did follow Spanish, but next semester in the catalog, it may not. You know, numbers are kind of assigned more ra randomly. So basically, the, there is really no logical sequence. And that's what nominal is. Might be easy to think of it. Nom equals name, so it's just a name and nothing else. Now, if you can put this label of a name on your data, but you can put it in some sort of order, an order that has meaning, then your data suddenly kind of goes up a level in measurement and is referred to as ordinal. So there, there's a way to compare them, but the important thing with ordinal is there is not some sort of way to distinguish how you fall into the next category. Here I gave the example good, better, best, but I mean you could even think of ranking your first three movies, your top three movies. You know, what makes one number one versus number two? You like it better, but did it have three more shooting scenes? Is that what made it better? And would two more shooting scenes have made it better? I don't even know what a shooting scene is, but you know what I mean? That Things can be ranked, but there's not some distinction that suddenly, oh, this movie's no longer better, now it's the best, and you know, does best fall down in ranks. So a third way to talk about a level of measuring data is interval. And this is where you can measure between values, which you know, with ordinal, we couldn't distinguish between them. Here there is a way to measure or distinguish between them. But what's really important is there is no starting or stopping value. So there's no distinct starting or end point. Like, let's look at an example. Temperature. In terms of Fahrenheit or Celsius, you know, we can go down to zero, but zero degrees is not our starting point. You know, we go into negative degrees. And we can go up to you know boiling we can go up to the highest day we've recorded on the earth we can go up to the temperature of the sun and we can maybe find something hotter than that so we don't have a stopping point you may have one but you may not have the other or possibly have neither um, consider like years in the sense of like the year 2005 again zero is not our starting point because we have years such as like 20 um, BC and we don't know what our end point is yet. I mean, unless you're following a particular Mayan calendar and, you know, we'll wait and see what happens. Um, so interval, we could distinguish between two categories. We know what it takes to be one year later, what it takes to be one degree later. But with ratio, not only do we have that distinction, but here we have a starting point of zero. And specifically, zero means there is an absence of the item. It doesn't exist. Um, like the age of a person, you know, if you're 21 years old, we started that at a certain point, and one moment before that, okay, you may have existed as a fetus, but you know, you weren't born yet. And so, you know, your age represents when you were born. There was a lack of birth before that. Maybe it's better to look at number of pets. I have no pets, so there's no, I have zero pets. There's no pets in my house, but, you know, my neighbor has five dogs, which you probably hear barking <laughs> as I record these. But, you know, we can distinguish between three to four dogs. There's an exact measurement, and there's a such thing as a beginning point. Maybe we don't have a stopping point for number of dogs that my neighbor will own, but that's another story.